Okay, I have my LCD wired on all the pins. Do a little printout, remember where all the wires go, map them out for pins on my uh, chip there. Map it all out. Just threw in a program I already had from another project just to make sure the LCD's working. It was something that red volt, what I wanted to set for and what it actually was putting out. <laughs> of course, those are just jumping around because uh, those pins that were reading volts are just floating right now. But I just threw that program in there just to uh, test the liquid crystal display, make sure all the wires worked up right. So it is working thus far. Okay, it's been a couple days since I've done the updates. So anyway, right now, um, <laughs> you can see this quickly starts turning into a mess when you solder and re-solder on a circuit board. I might etch a circuit board once I get happy with the way that it works. So, basically, you know, I got the, the processor run on there. There's a read relay, which is going to just switch to 24 volts over to the contactor on the water heater. Um, got the LCD still attached. So let me put power to it, because right now I have it, uh, the basic clock and everything running in it. I'm sending approximately a 60 hertz pulse to it, to the input, which is going to, you know, simulating 60 cycles per second that you get on line voltage, which I'll tell you about later, why I'm doing that. I just have the LCD just showing that information for my own diagnostics. Got the 60 hertz a second input and just got the counter. Um, pretty much got divided down towards incrementing in the seconds column about once per every six, you know, once per second. Okay, see if I can. Uh, this is simulating up, oh, pushed it too much. When I go into my uh, mode select, which will be up on the controller itself. I gotta adjust the timings of going through here. Okay, adjust hours. See, because I got it, it started up at all zero, so we're at zero hours, zero minutes, zero, or 44 seconds, you know, just since it's been running. So I'm gonna increment that up to, uh, time is 4.45 p.m., so that would be, uh, 1600 hours. I got this in 24 hour format. Go to the minutes. 45, I'll just go backwards. I just made it so I could go forwards and backwards at the time, like that. And pretty much like that. I don't need to adjust seconds. And I can just adjust my set time on and off, which I haven't gotten finished with the program on that yet. But now you see the clock is set. So I am able to uh, set the clock, have the clock run. When it's said and done, I'll take out that <laughs> hundreds of a second or whatever that is right there won't need it. I'll just have the time and this is probably a message, you know, the next scheduled event or whatever when I get that far. So next thing I want to do on this is I want to I want to take a 24 volts and power supply, drop it down to the 5 volts that's going to eventually run this thing. And also uh, half rectify a pulse reg in uh Limit it uh, with a 4.7 volt zener. Basically, get me a 5 volt pulse going to the interrupt input, which is what this is—the interrupt pin in there. <clears throat> and every negative edge of the pulse, which happens at 60 times a second on the AC power, uh, it'll it'll clock my processor for me to give the time base. You need to just divide that down uh, 60 times. To get your to get one pulse every second for the for the time clock, and then then you just index everything when it hits 60. It's just a rollover. So uh, pretty simple. I just want to make the time base run off of the 60 hertz power, which is usually pretty good. Evidently, it's usually how they used to do all the alarm clocks that you plug in, you know, in your bedrooms, uh, as they just get the pulse right off the sine wave.
you see you're just getting the positive edge of that sine wave. Ground being, you know, zero being in the middle. Move just after the resistor where the basically the zener diode is going to clamp, you know, or short out anything over 4.7 volts. You see it just reduces it to a little 4.7 volt pulse. I should be able to now solder on a wire and inject that pulse over to my interrupt input on that microprocessor and it this should form the time base for my clock so let me solder something up okay I have this uh, alligator wire going to the input actually goes to an input of a transistor and the transistor uh, just grounds the signal going in there which has a pull up resistor on it basically we're going to inject where I've been injecting my pulse from my uh, frequency generator but now we're going to inject it from here so I'm going to power up, connect the 5 volts or whatever I got going on my microprocessor. You can see the, the, the clock doesn't move, it just sits there. And uh, I'm going to take this, clamp it onto this, which should be generating that 5 volt, 4.7 volt pulse you just saw a second ago. There's the clock base. You can uh, ignore that, because I'll take that out, but there's your hours, minutes, and seconds. Which should be very accurate, because I'm just using the 60 hertz uh, sign coming right out of the AC power. That's clocked from the AC power from our utility company, <laughs> which is pretty accurate, usually. Accurate enough for a clock. That's a lot of alarm clocks, like I said, will just use that. So I go through and set my time. Oops, I went too far there. I don't have the actual button set up, I'm just touching jumpers. So now it's 5.07 p.m. Was that 1,700 hours? And then go to the minutes, 07. I'm not gonna set my timer yet. I have my clock. 17.07 and there's the seconds. So that's 5.07 like I have on the computer there.